Um, I'm Jana Murakad and I'm from the Sunshine Coast. Uh, my people are Yorta Yorta and the Dajarong, which is around Echuca, Barma Forest and Shepparton in Victoria. Twenty-six years uh, and my practice has changed very much over time. I started out painting traditional stories, a, bit, a few from my country, but then I moved away from the, the styles of that into a more contemporary kind of style. I kind of changed when my thought changed of seeing that I am a, an Aboriginal person living in a modern day environment and wanted to more myriad that. So I've got pictures of portraits these days that I use, but also with the traditional style in the background. But then in that traditional style, it's also done in a way that is a bit more contemporary. Um, so I've moved away from painting the traditional stories primarily because I felt I was expressing not only my stories but the stories of other people as well in these images. Um, uh, this exhibition, I, I, I was inspired to do this, so what, what brought me to create this exhibition? I went to the Archibald, I had a, was a finalist with a portrait of Uncle Archie Roach. And when I got back, I felt this distinct inner talking and conversation from the ancestors. Let me say this, it's not words that I hear in my ears, but it's words that I hear in my soul. And my ancestors always have guided me with my art. And they guided me to create this series, a series that would dispel the stereotypical myths that oppress Aboriginal people, that they're all drunk, lay about, wife beating, child molestering, welfare recipients and dispel those myths to show the truth of how this culture has lived for over 2,000 generations in harmony not only with the, the natural environment around them but in harmony with themselves and the social structures that enabled this to be so sustainable. So that was the inspiration for creating it. Another inspiration was creating it was to instill pride in our mobs. It took three and a half months to create Actually, I painted one piece outside of this, so there's 16 pieces in Kinship, but the 15 other ones I created within three and a half months, and it was pure devotion because there's so much work involved in every one of them. It was pure devotion that I sacrificed, social sacrifice, didn't catch up with people. Often I wouldn't even walk outside my front door within five days and would work 17 hour stretches because I really wanted to get this out as soon as I could. Uh, exhibiting and on the road, so yeah. So with the colours in my colour palette, what you're asking, and is do I have a photo uh, relationship with photography? In my colour palette I've endeavoured to use quite striking, warm and cool colours. Sometimes in complementary, sometimes on their own just warm colours or cool colours. I endeavour to when I approach a, a blank canvas, I don't necessarily have a set out idea of this is the way it's going to be done and that's the way it's going to happen. Sometimes I more have a seed of an idea and it comes about. So the ones that I approach with the colours, often I try to pick an image that's going to match those colours and be able to speak to the viewer that looks at it. So it's far more than an intellectual process. I feel that colours give you a sense of how to feel. If we look at a warm yellow, it makes us feel something maybe warm. But if we look at a cool yellow, for me it makes me feel, ooh, a bit, I don't want to go close to that colour. So I've used these colours in a way with an image to bypass our intellect and touch people inside. And the reason for doing this is the message of the paintings I find is able to reach the viewer if they aren't intellectualising the whole process. Um, so with the photographs, I have used a lot of these with photographs because they are images of the past. They are images that are more traditional seeing Aboriginal people because I wanted to show those complex laws of kinship in each piece. And they do exist today, but we're living in a modern society where a lot of Aboriginal youth today are moving away from this which is a sad thing to see in another story to talk about. So in that I have used a lot of photos and in that when I look at the photos I try to imagine that scene because for me it's not about copying the photo. Yes the images are a reference point 
but it's really about trying to instill a life within the painting. So for me, a lot of it is imbued with my mind and my heart imbuing that photo with life rather than just having it copied so it looks alike. For that thing, I could just put up the image and that could be done like that rather than recreating it in a painting. This exhibition touches on a variety of issues with kinship. Kinship with our animals. There's a, there's a painting here that has a picture with a hand with a witchetty grub in it. And that's the whole scene on the canvas. And that shows that kinship over thousands of years, that relationship with the animals around us. They weren't seen as something we dominated or control. We understood that as much as we may eat these animals, we are the life that is giving back to these animals once our body falls to the earth. And that we, we have a sense of custodianship and respect and a sense of resp responsibility to look after. Uh, other parts, aspects, there's kinship with now, today, our non-Aboriginal family, friends. There is a, a painting that's women's business that shows a young girl being painted up by an Aboriginal auntie and in that she's non-Aboriginal, so as she's getting painted, it, the story shares about how today they are learning about culture. Not to take it away from Aboriginal people, but to be able to incorporate it in this mainstream society so that now we can live together with an awareness and walk together in that, that, that truth. I really hope in my deepest core that people see that these aren't images of Aboriginal people as much as they are to the eye, they're images of humanity and it doesn't matter what our past is or where we've come from, whether it's Scottish, Swedish, English, Indian, Muslim, we all have a traditional past in it and it all relates around these universal values of community, of around family, of around responsibility and respect for our natural environment. I hope that people are imbued with this and that in some way they can go out into their world and this can be shared with the people around them. And hopefully this ripples out to see that things like oppression and racism and ignorance are things that only put difference between this difference rather than, yes, we see difference with our eye but accepting this difference and not seeing it as a hurdle to connect and live in harmonious relationship with people. Yeah. I feel very honoured to have the exhibition here at Tandenya. Um, we've really, my wife, who is my manager, who is my number one promoter, and she would call herself my number one fan. I don't really see it that way. I don't have fan. Anyway, she has orchestrated it and we have put it together to get out to all the communities. Rather than just have it go to Melbourne or Sydney, we've really tried to get it out to as many communities as we have because as much as it's dispelling those stereotypical myths, it's really about instilling pride and empowering Aboriginal people to see that they aren't coming from what non-Aboriginal people have put out there as propaganda, not coming from 80,000 years of a backward race rolling around the dirt from their, you know, being saved from their cannibalistic ways. They had such complex laws, such complex ways of relating to ensure sustainability for their future generations. So if anything, for me personally, I feel that this society today is going backwards because it is rampant that they see that they're taking for now and not allowing for our future generation. So um, I feel very honoured to have it here at this, this gallery, which celebrates this very essence and very honoured to be